the show, the billion dollar valuation of Balogwan Broad does. Let's talk about the stock market and Alaba market. Let's talk about share IPOs and diesel supply LPOs. Let's talk about Broad Street. The Nigerian Stock Exchange recorded an all time high of and Balogun Street. Uh, the maximum I'll spend on fuel so on throw mm. was 4,000. On Balogun Broad, Wednesdays at 5. <laughs> How is insecurity affecting the food business? A conversation we started last week, but it deserves a second hour because the food business affects everybody. I mean, we are all customers (laughs) of the food business. Am I right? I mean, we often hear uh, how for most Nigerians, over half of the monthly income goes to food. And this, this brings us to our big hard fact. Today's big hard fact. According to the World Bank, rising food prices sank 7 million more Nigerians into poverty last year. Like I said last week, this statistic is scary. But when you think about it, it makes sense. If a family needs to use half their income to feed themselves and food prices increases by 50%, that family is suddenly spending 75% of their income on food. It's very easy to slip into poverty in that scenario. So that's why today's conversation is very important for all of us. We have to understand what the constraints are in the food business. And my guests uh, from last week are back here because they are the perfect people to talk about this. They both work in the sector. My first guest is the president of the Northern Consensus Movement. It's an amalgamation of 75 economically inclined northern organizations. Uh, Dr. Awal Abdullahi Aliyu, welcome back to Balogun and Broad on Hard Facts. Thank you very much for having me once again. And then we have as well an agro consultant. He's an agricultural extension expert. He's the CEO of Lance Farms Nigeria, Akintobi Olarenwaju. Welcome to Balogun and Broad on Hard Facts. Thank you for having me, Sandra. Okay. And Lagos, we want to hear from you as well. Let's have your questions for our guests. Um, do you have a, 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 a business in the food value chain? How have insecurity and other issues affected your operation? Have your cost prices gone up? What have you had to do to adjust? These are the same questions I asked last week, Wednesday, and I'm repeating them again today. Dr. Awa, last week we talked quite a bit about insecurity, but I I also want to talk about climate. We haven't had much rain this year and less so no. in the north. How badly has this lack of rain affected food supply and which crops are especially vulnerable? Uh, well, uh, like you know, the farming season in Nigeria, not only in the north, all depends on the rainfall. The rainfall is actually the number one reason why we all farm and then uh, without rain or without water there can be no uh, uh, crops production uh, or crops growth so the climate change has actually really affected uh, the farming season in northern nigeria ordinarily uh, we are in the month of july today is the 7th of july Uh, in most cases rain starts falling by the end of april and then uh, it grows to May, and by June, we would have stability uh, of rainfall. Then by the month of August, uh, July to August, uh, in fact, people are beginning to think of harvesting the first set because there are people that uh, do uh, a dual farming season uh, or cropping, if you like. Hmm. For example, there are some states in the north where uh, within the three, four month season of farming, you find out they do uh, they have twice uh, production twice, mm-hmm. but this year I can tell you uh, the thing is really really uh, bad per se because uh, lack of rain is really affecting the growth of the crops. Uh, in fact, we are praying right now for the rain to continue to come. Otherwise, there's going to be very serious uh, uh, crisis as mm-hmm. far as uh, farming uh, and production of uh, farm produce is concerned uh, in northern Nigeria. Mm-hmm. Then talk about what type of crops will be affected by uh, lack of rain. Mm-hmm. I would say that uh, 90% of the crops that are being um, produced in north will be affected if there is no sufficient uh, uh, rainfall. With all crops, I will tell you, 
require uh, rain. Even the ones that you may think that may not require too much of rain will be the millet uh, and, the, and the guinea corn. And even that one, they had to, they need rain at the beginning until when it gets to almost the process of its production, mm -hmm. that is when it will require less uh, rainfall. So mm -hmm. as at this moment, mm -hmm. every crop requires rain and we badly need the rain uh, for, for us to be able to have a bumper harvest. But as, as it is, mm -hmm. uh, it is not truly, really, uh, people are not too comfortable, farmers are not too comfortable with the raining with the lack of rain uh, situation mm. yes lack mm. of rain mm. right now as i speak as you speak landra we're expecting a maize harvest at the end of the year uh maize prices are already sky high due to shortage sky high, yeah. uh, landra do you think the rains will affect the harvest and uh, can we expect maize prices will remain high thank you for that question sandra um just like um doctor mentioned um, rainfall is, uh, every, every crops will deserve um, water. Um, without water, um, there won't be growth. And um, this year, I would say last year, um, we've had uh, insufficient rainfall. And then this is due to um, climate change effect, right? And then now, um, you know, farmers are, we are the least people that um, cause climate change, but we are the most affected when it comes to climate change. <laughs> and then with the lack of rainfall, like I said, last year, um, at a point, we plant maize and then it turned to popcorn in the soil um, because there was no rainfall. And then, That's so right. the effect of that, um, you know, cascaded down to this year um, because um, we do not have um, enough produce. Um, mm. By this time, on a normal, um, when we have enough rainfall, by this time, farmers will have second maize on the field. That means yeah. by last month, we would have harvested like the first set. But this year, people are just planning because the rain just, you know, started mm. now. And it affects the planting calendar. Mm. And so if you look at the price of maize now, mm. it is it is not what we buy it from last year. Mm. And then with mm. the effect of um, climate change and lack of rainfall, um, I, I fear that um, the price will not even come down. And then let's expect more, you know, increase in price. Um, because we'll have lesser um, harvest and then the demand will still be increased and then we have uh, more people paying more uh, people paying more for for maize mm. Mm. um I, I, do you think or do you know Lanre, this is for you and then i'll come back to dr uh, abdullahi to also answer that question as well but Lanre, do you think that steps are being taken at i don't know maybe local government or state level to improve artificial irrigation Landry? Yes, so um, when it comes to artificial irrigation, um, it is um, it is cost effective, like it is cost intensive for farmers mm. to start looking at um, artificial um, irrigation. Um, and the governments that we have, they are not proactive. You know, we have a reactive government when everything has gone bad, that is when they come into the situation. And but when it comes to food, if governments are not um, proactive, um, by then, hunger would have been, you know, almost everywhere before they know that this is serious. And then I've not even seen any serious activities when it comes to helping farmers um, to, you know, um, face the, um, the challenge that comes with um, lack of rainfall. Uh, for most of the farmers, even my colleagues, they've been trying to, uh, you know, from their own self, try to um, irrigate their farm from their pockets. But when you look about this, these are these are the farmers that can actually afford um, irrigation, artificial irrigation. What about the small scale farmers that um, to even have enough capital for planting operation? It is it is a tedious process for them. Not to talk of looking at the cost of irrigation. To irrigate one hectare of land, you will have at least three fifty thousand to you know to irrigate one hectare of land. Ooh. And now look at people that are having five hectares. Mm. How much are you looking at, mm. you know, to irrigate? Mm. And all of this is, um, it is the, the odds are stacked against farmers, mm -hmm. even without um, climate change. Mm -hmm. Now, with this um, effect of um, climate change on farmers and the insecurity, mm -hmm. I, I fear for the world, <laughs> sincerely. <laughs> Dr. Wow. Well, uh, I think Larry is uh, Larry is really speaking my mind okay. uh, because uh, as as farmers and those who are 
uh, uh, into the farm, uh, farming business, uh, we will almost be saying the same thing. Mm. Uh, the only differences that I could only add to what Larry said mm. earlier is just that uh, um, the reality is government is not proactive in terms of uh, 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 artificial um, artificial farming or artificial irrigation like mm. uh, you try to ask. Mm. Uh, recently, uh, about two years or there about ago, the Central Bank of Nigeria, uh, uh, in collaboration with Lagos State Government, for example, mm. and Kebi State uh, uh, government went to, into working working agreement and there was a, a bumper harvest of uh, rice mm -hmm. uh, that was about uh, two, uh, three years back mm -hmm. where you have the one they call the Lagos rice. Lake uh, rice. In the, in the back. Mm. Yeah. But then um, now that is even with the support of the Central Bank of Nigeria. Mm. Now if you want to go uh, solo that is to say a single farmer just like Larry tried to, to highlight mm -hmm. that he wants to go into commercial uh, uh, artificial irrigation. Uh, how much will it cost him to farm a, a hectare? And what of those that have like between five to ten hectares of land, mm. and then is not having the support of government? Mm. And the government is not um, did not really come uh, because if you concentrate, for example, the central bank uh, 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 joint partnership program mm -hmm. with Lagos and Kebbi State mm -hmm. is just done in Kebbi State alone. Mm -hmm. What of the other state, you have, even if you are looking at northern state, for example, mm -hmm. uh, you have, take uh, uh, Kano also. Mm -hmm. Like Kano state government, even before the coming of the central bank or even before the coming of the present administration, mm -hmm. there has always been rice farmers and then uh, the other crops uh, throughout the season farming. But mm -hmm. even that one is because uh, there was the Tiga Dam, the Kadawa Dam uh, project, and then the Dambata dam project that mm -hmm. is within the axis of Kano State. Mm -hmm. And even that one, it is the farmers themselves that worked hard to make sure that those dams continue to exist, not really because government is coming to intervene through uh, rehabilitation of those dams and then uh, uh, re re reconstruction so that there will be enough uh, supply of water for both uh, all throughout the uh, uh, farming season. Mm -hmm. So the government really needs to come into this very one. Because uh, private or individual uh, uh, irrigation is very, very difficult. Like you ask in terms of um, uh, the corn today. Mm -hmm. Today, the corn sells for between 27 to 32,000 naira per bag. Mm. So if, if it sells between 27 to 32,000 naira per bag, mm -hmm. and last year around this time, corn sells for about 15,000 or thereabout. Mm -hmm. Then by this year around this time, uh, because there was a shortage of rainfall also mm -hmm. in last, last year, year, that was why mm -hmm. it even went high. Mm -hmm. It went that high. Mm -hmm. Now this year, uh, we are afraid the climate is really not too friendly, uh, not even as friendly as last year. Mm -hmm. So if it is not as friendly as last year, mm -hmm. and then as at this moment, we are having between 27 to 30, 2,000 naira per bag. Mm -hmm. And if the rain season continue in this very uh, pace, mm -hmm. which is to say by this year, by this time next year, mm -hmm. then we should be buying a bag of corn for, possibly for 40, 45,000 naira, which is really really too bad which is scary but you know the central very, very bank the, the central bank just announced that it will be releasing 50,000 metric tons of maize from the strategic uh, grain reserve to um, increase supply and bring down uh, maize prices do you think that that could help the Kosele, you and i know very well that when the federal government released grains during the the covid-19 uh, issue most especially when they released the one that was taken to Lagos were rotten already, isn't it? Mm. Most of the, the ones that were released were rotten. People, they are not consumable. Mm. So these are part of the problems that we are facing. Even the storage system itself is not sufficient, is not also not safe. Mm. One is not sufficient, two is not safe. And then um, the strategy of uh, both the, the, the storage and also when it comes out to the release of the grains and how the supply chain mm. is equally not uh, friendly to the people that might require uh, all this. So I am telling you that for you to succeed in this things, it is not just for government to sit and formulate policies. Okay. For government to succeed, you need to carry the people that are into the business along. They should be the ones to advise. This is the best way to go about it. Not just people sitting in the offices, in the ministry, in the department and agencies of government who are not even farmers, but they are working under the Ministry of Agriculture or even a central bank uh, in the central bank. They are under the Department of Agriculture. They are not practical farmers. Hmm. They are theoretical farmers. They are only in the office writing theory and putting up what they think. Hmm. It is not about what they think. 
It's about what is practical mm -hmm. on ground. So mm -hmm. release of uh, grains from um, from reserve is not is not going to be sufficient mm -hmm. in any case. Uh, you know the volume of uh, uh, food required in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. What they are releasing is just uh, a tip of a, of an iceberg. Mm -hmm. So it's not even going to be close to being enough. Not to talking of uh, uh, enough or being sufficient. You understand? Mm -hmm. So I think the central bank, in collaboration with uh, the, though the central bank is still the government. But the Central Bank and the Ministry of Agriculture and all agencies that had to do with agriculture, I think, needed to come together and also involve the farmers. And not just, uh, when I say farmers, I'm not talking about only farmers that are, are high-class farmers, mm -hmm. people that uh, don't even go to the farm themselves. They mm -hmm. are farmers, but they don't go to the farm. Mm -hmm. They have managers. He is the farmer at the high, very highest level. And then before it comes to the level that the manager is going to be a demand that is managing the farm directly, you mm -hmm. find like three, four, five chains. Mm -hmm. Even those ones are not supposed to, they can only be on the advisory role as well. But practically, you need to come down to the ladder. If you want to do it state by state, do it state by state. Involve the State Minister of uh, Agriculture, the Central Bank, the Federal Minister of Agriculture, all departments and agencies of government involved in agriculture, and also get to the man at the lowest farmer in the remotest villages and grow them chain by chain like that sit and discuss farming, farm produce, farm problems, farm's implication, best way to go about it, what are the problems, and then listen to them. They will give you sufficient advice that will guide the government towards achieving success as far as food security and food supply is concerned in Nigeria. So unless and until we do that, mm -hmm. we'll continue to have this very problem that we are, we are having. It's not about written policy, it's about practical action. Lanre has thoughts, but Lanre, I would like you to also share with me what you think about the 12 companies that um, CBN is giving maize to. So we've got Zatec and Olam included in, in those 12 companies, right? The idea is that they're going to use um, the, the, the maize as inputs for products like chicken feed, which are now a bit scarce um, and expensive. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I, what I want to find out, Lanre, do you think that these 12 companies will agree to sell the finished products at lower prices? Or do you think that they're still, we're still going to have the same problem, the same middleman problem um, again? Lanre. Yeah, thank you for, for that question. Um, I, before I mention, I talk about this one question that you asked. Mm -hmm. What I want to say is, if we think releasing maize from our reserve will solve the problem, then we are on a very long thing. It's just like pushing judgment day ahead because um, either finding the solution now mm -hmm. or trying to mitigate the problem. Mm. And I think finding the solution is the main thing that we should be thinking about now, not mitigating the issue and extending the, um, the Armageddon for another year, right? Mm -hmm. Now, when you talk to them, this mm -hmm. when does this fit, right? Mm -hmm. How many benefit from the from the feed produced? That is number one. Okay. And secondly, what is the price, um, um that the government will agree to sell? The, so say, okay, we're going to be we're going to be, um, from the reserve. Mm -hmm. You should have a cap for your products. Mm -hmm. Is there an agreement based on that, or the uh, forties of market uh, of demand and supply will determine the price? If you are looking at the forties of um, demand and supply, mm -hmm. then they will sell at a very high price because presently they're shorted of feed for poultry farmers. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. How many poultry farmers are buying from these 12 companies? Of these poultry farmers, over 50%, they produce their feed themselves. They produce their feed themselves. Hmm. So now, if you are releasing uh, feed to these bigger companies, what about individual poultry farmers? How do they get these um, maize? How do they get this um, feed for their, for their poultry? Hmm. You know, so we cannot just leave um, the 12 companies and say, okay, all other poultry farmers should be, you know, to source uh, feed for themselves. That is not the best solution to this problem, you know. And so I think um, releasing the uh, grain reserve, if we release our grain reserve now, what if we have the same problem in the next seven years? What are we going to bear, you know, are we going to, you know, rely on? Hmm. So now the solution, what we need to do is to find solution to the problem. Help these farmers, 
you know, to you know, to em empower them to be able to cater, to be able to face all of these challenges. Don't just come and release grains into the economy. The grains they are releasing, what the quality of these grains? We need to look into all of that as well. Now, you sound like you have the solution to the problem, Landry, but I'll come back to you for solutions. But right now, I want to take calls. Lagos, join the conversation, please. 0700-993-993-993. That's the number for men to call. Women, call us on 01465-7190. 01465-7190. Do you have questions for our guests? I have uh, an agro consultant, an agricultural extension expert, who is the CEO of Lance Farms Nigeria on the show with me, Akintobi Olarinwaju. I also have on the show with me Dr. Awal Abdullah Aliu, who um, this week as well, he's the president of the Northern Consensus Movement, an amalgamation of 75 economically inclined northern organizations. Last week he told us what exactly that uh, uh, movement, that coalition does. Let's talk to you. Hello. Thank you for calling us. Sorry about that. Call back if you can. 99.3. Hello. Hello. Hi, how are Hello. you? Yeah, President Sandra, good evening. Good evening. And good evening to our guest. Go ahead. President Sandra, you remember when I mentioned to you about the farm settlement at uh, Ondo, the last toll gate before you get to it, built by uh, Mimiko. Okay. Very big, vast land, though. I was happy there. Then you come to my state in Delta, uh, Uganda. He built one again around on Sokwa. Very vast land, too. You have buildings, you have everything there. But at the end, like the man from the north was saying, all these uh, government uh, farmers in the office. When uh, Chief Algobi made the agricultural minister, I was so happy. This is a man I respect a lot. At the end, what did you have? You remember your this man you always interview, um, Angulari, Angulari, the, the advisor to the president on something. Oh, what is the man's name? Just go ahead, just go ahead, just go ahead. Uh -huh. He talked about uh, rice uh, shadow. He mentioned uh, Bakalike. He mentioned Kano. He mentioned this. You hear what the man said? The, the name they released from their whatever is up, it's not consumable. That man, that, um, and, uh, what is that man's name? One young man who so speak a lot of grammar, Anglary or something. You know, he was saying all this, and I said, look, this guy, you are not a farmer. How come um, Aki Wumi is still around, right? You remember Kumi, the Minister of Agriculture during uh, President Jonathan? Yes, go ahead, Chris. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Why not get in touch of, with that man to tell them what to do? You hear what the man said, they will go to the Bank. I know somebody in school area here. The guy got almost half a million. And it's not a farmer. They do all this, uh, who knows who, <laughs> party, whatever member. But the real farmers are not getting all this. It's a friend of mine, um, after taking a loan for this poultry or something, this big uh, farm or something, at the end, the man closed up that business. He's trying to pay that bill back. So please, that man from the north and this Larry guy, the government should deal with this type of people. Not only the Minister of Agriculture people that doesn't know what is happening. All right, Chris, thank you very much for calling. 99.3. Hello? Hello, good, af Hello, good afternoon, good, Sandra. Good afternoon. What's your name? My name is Samuel. I'm calling from Lakwa. Good to have you on the show. We've got one minute, 30 seconds. Yes, uh, Sandra, you see, I, I am from Benue State. Okay. And I was born in Cameroon. If you travel to Cameroon here, mm. the neighboring Cameroon, you will see the, the, the level of irrigation farming that the people of Ca the Cameroonians have been doing to feed and to increase the e economy of that country. Okay. Come down to... To, uh, to, to Nigeria. If, for instance, now, the, may, may, for instance, now, you know that, uh, let me give an example of what has happened, like the COVID, and the, all of a sudden there's no rain. There will be hunger in this land. The government need to do, do a lot in terms of supporting farmers for, for irrigation farming. I am telling you the truth. You will see hectares upon hectares upon hectares of land being irrigated by the Cameroonian government and the private investors. Banana, uh, plantain, cocoa, uh, maize, in short, everything. And for as, 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 as somebody who is in Benue, as, as, as I was raised up as a farmer, mm -hmm. you know, I, it happened that I have that capital to do what it takes to become great, 
is inside of farming. All right. Thank you for calling us. Now, we'll take a break. Uh, after the break, we will keep this conversation going. Uh, when we come back from the break, uh, Dr. Awal, you'll talk to me about market access, right? How do the food producers in the groups that you represent go about finding their customers? How far in advance do they know who they're going to sell to? How predictable is it for them? That's a question you'll answer for me after the break. And Aking, you too, uh, I'll ask you the same question, but I'll talk about the farmers that you provide extension services is for how do they find out how do they go about finding their customers how much assistance do food producers need with that lagos this break uh will end by 5 37 so don't go away i'm sandra ezekwesili this is what we live for to connect with history in the making to stream every breathtaking moment to witness mbappe kane and all the football greats to be part of the journey to glory this is where we live the good and the bad. And unashamedly give our all to the beautiful game. Live the experience. Watch all the Euro 2020 action live from Supersport on Showmax Pro. Sign up at Showmax.com. It's time, Nigerians. Let's join hands to break the cycle of misinformation in Nigeria. Remember that disinformation can tear our dear country apart. Africa Check is here to help you verify the authenticity of any information, photos, or videos you see online. Simply add us on WhatsApp on 0908 377-7789. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at africacheck underscore ng or visit our website at africacheck.org for more tips. Africa Check, sorting fact from fiction. Hey Legosian, some thrilling news for you here. Do you know that Airpeace, Nigeria's premier airline, is launching flight operations into Ilorin on Thursday, June the 17th, 2021? Yes, that's right. Now this means you can fly daily to Ilorin from Lagos and Abuja while experiencing our signature hospitality offered by a well-trained crew. Fly with Airpeace to Ilorin and enjoy peaceful skies as you take advantage of our affordable fares. For bookings, head to our website on www.flyairpeace.com or download the Airpeace mobile app on Play Store or App Store. Go on, start booking and share the great news. Airpeace, your peace, our goal. Let's talk about the life you desire. A fantastic job, great education for your kids, exotic vacations, and finally, retiring well, knowing that you've secured your family's financial needs. It's beautiful when you think of it, right? But without the right plan, all these dreams could just be wishful thinking. My Hair's Plan from Hair's Life combines savings and life insurance to secure your child's future. We pay an agreed amount up to 5 million naira or more to your child or beneficiary if the unforeseen happens to you, their provider. This way, your dream for your child continues as planned. Visit www.hairslifeassurance.com to get started. Here's life. Tell us your dreams. You don't start again, no. You don't start. And I know what? If my money is my money and your money is your money, that means that money is equal to Mama Karo money and P money is equal to Papa Karo money. Period. Oh, so that's how we do them now? Yes, now. Now the almighty formula be that. <laughs> It's time, Nigerians. Let's join hands to break the cycle of misinformation in Nigeria. Remember that disinformation can tear our dear country apart. Africa Check is here to help you verify the authenticity of any information, photos, or videos you see online. 
Simply add us on WhatsApp on 0908-377-7789. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at africacheck underscore ng or visit our website at africacheck.org for more tips. Africa Check, sorting fact from fiction. Ever so often, we hear billions and billions of naira stolen by politicians. After a little noise, the matter dies down. Do you wonder what happens to all that money? Bad roads, poor power supply, police brutality. Everyone is asking when Nigeria will get better. 54% of interactions with the police end in payment of bribes. A 2019 report shows that about 117 million naira is paid as bribes yearly in Nigeria. Nigerians, say no to corruption. Demand that your lawmakers do the job you you elected them to do. Don't ask for or pay bribes. Demand that elected officials pass anti-corruption laws and prosecute offenders. Like Alice Walker said, the most common way people give up their power is by thinking they don't have any. Work with Serap to demand accountability from elected officials. Visit www.serap-nigeria.org now to sign a petition to demand good governance. This message is from the Social Economic Rights and Accountability Project. Serap. With support from the MacArthur Foundation. It's time, Nigerians. Let's join hands to break the cycle of misinformation in Nigeria. Remember that disinformation can tear our dear country apart. Africa Check is here to help you verify the authenticity of any information, photos, or videos you see online. Simply add us on WhatsApp on 0908-377-7789. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at africacheck underscore ng or visit our website at africacheck.org for more tips. Africa Check, sorting fact from fiction. Need money? Rent money. Need money? Rent money. Need money? Rent money. Visit rentmoney.com or call 0700-5500. Need money? Rent money. Need money? Rent money. Need money? Rent money. Need money? Rent money. Visit rentmoney.com or call 0700-5500. Need money? Rent money. This is what we live for. To connect with history in the making. To stream every breathtaking moment. To witness Mbappe, Kane, and all the football greats. To be part of the journey to glory. This is where we live the good and the bad. And unashamedly, Give our all to the beautiful game. Live the experience. Watch all the Euro 2020 action live from Supersport on Showmax Pro. Sign up at Showmax.com. The European club football season is over, but football never sleeps. Enter the UEFA European Football Championship. The pandemic could only delay, but never deny the fans the excitement they crave as the Euros take center stage. It's Euro 2020 in 2021. A tournament with a difference. With scenes all over the European continent, traversing state lines and capitals. From Rome to Baku, St. Petersburg, Amsterdam, Bucharest, Glasgow, Copenhagen, Seville, Munich and London. The coverage is global and the cast nationwide. They seem to keep hold of the ball, see so much of the ball, but at the end of the day, they tend to do little or nothing with the ball. Throws it into the box. It's in. A player who's been having a renaissance as a season. He collected to the pass like a socket. Fire the shot like a rocket. But no other person for Rafael Baran. What they want to do is sit back, weigh your weaknesses, uh, and then when they get the ball, they can't attack you. It was a brilliant piece of play by Karim Benzema. But they decided against that counter-attack and go all the way back. So beautiful. Trace Alexander-Arnold, 38 
spaces. This is your goal of the week. When you defend, you can defend for 91 minutes, and just for one minute, everything will change. He completes his hat trick. He's in the pursuit of perfection. Thursdays are behind him already, and young managers are picking up the money. Covering every blade of grass for a full month from 11th June to 11th July 2021 on Nigeria's number one radio station for sports and talk, Nigeria Info. Info. Reach out for sponsorship and advertising. Euro 2020 on Nigeria Info. It's live football just the way you like it. of vitamin C. Good life magic. Taste the magic of good life. Welcome back to your number one talk, news, and sports station. This is Nigeria Info. It's 5.38. I'm Sandra Ezekwesili. And today on Balogun and Broad, we are still talking about the food business because food business affects everybody. I mean, all of us are customers of food, right? <laughs> um, we hear all the time how uh, more than half of the monthly income of the average Nigerian goes to food. So it, it's important for you to... Find out how exactly your food gets to your table. Why is your food more expensive now than it was three months ago, seven months ago, last year? Um, what can be done to get it to be cheaper again? I have on the show with me today industry experts. Uh, my first guest is the president of the Northern Consensus Movement. Uh, it's an amalgamation of 75 economically inclined northern organizations. He told us last week who and who were in this uh, uh, movement. He told us who and who he represents or they represent. And he told us how important they are as far as food for the nation is concerned. His name is Dr. Awal Abdullahi, uh, Abdullahi Aliyu. And then my second guest is an agro consultant. He's an agricultural extension expert. He's the CEO of Lance Farms Nigeria. His name is Akintobi Olarinwaju. Gentlemen, before the break, I mentioned that um, I would love for you to talk to me about market access. How do the food producers in the groups that you represent go about finding their customers? How far in advance do they know how they're going to sell to, who they're going to sell to? How predictable is it for them? Dr. Awal? Well, thank you very much, uh, Sandra. Um, like you know, once you are in a business, naturally uh, you find customers. And also those that are interested in what you sell uh, also find you, who the person that is selling uh, the, 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 the product. So naturally it is a two-way, it is a double-edged sword. Okay. While we also, as farmers, who produces the, the, the product or the crops, uh, search for buyers. Uh, also, the buyers are also searching for, instead of having middlemen, they are also searching to buy directly from uh, the producers. So this is a two-way thing. So uh, like I, I, I will tell you, it is not too difficult for us to find buyers of our produce. Uh, in fact, we all know we have our buyers. We have the off-takers, if you like. Once you produce it, you move it to the various markets. There are people that are waiting to, to off-take those products from you and then uh, resell back to uh, if you like retailers, you, you can call them whole buyers and then they, buy, they now get, sell to uh, re retailers or things like that. So these ones are readily available, I, I can tell you that. In fact, sometimes uh, when you bring the, the farm produce, uh, there's a very high competition. In fact, uh, 
in some cases you find the buyers fighting themselves. Uh, but I am, though he's my customer. No, I knew him first. No, but this very one that is bringing, uh, it's, I was the one that speak to him about his first one, the one to buy. At the end of the day, okay, let us do a 50-50 uh, buying arrangement. No, I can only give you a 30%. I will take 70%, things like that. Mm. So the honest truth is that um, uh, the off-takers are not difficult mm -hmm. uh, to come by. They are there. Uh, and then, uh, in, in fact, if you like, you can even say that uh, in most cases, uh, the, 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 the suppliers, the, pro the producers are even uh, in short supply, most especially like uh, Larry rightly uh, said to you, mm -hmm. the issue most challenge is the finances, because um, most especially the lower, uh, the low income farmers, mm -hmm. there is insufficient finances. And then when the, the government is saying that they are assisting farmers, it only goes to the office uh, uh, farmers, not really the fruit farmers. So, <laughs> uh, get, getting uh, the, the producers are there and the off-takers are also uh, available. readily uh, available. The only challenge sometimes is that uh, uh, off-takers are readily available, but this, in most cases, some of these... Okay, let's come to Lanry then. Uh, Lanry, same question for you, but, um, you know, talking about the farmers that you provide extension services for, how do they go about finding their customers? How much assistance do food producers need with that? Lanry? Lanry, are you there? Okay, I think Lanry took me seriously when I said we can travel. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to bring bring you back to something you said uh, about, uh, what's the word now, when the government attempts to help the farmers, right? So we often hear yeah. about the CBN Anchor Borrower Scheme for farmers okay. and other such okay. government programs to provide farmers with credit. How do farmers go about accessing these facilities? Are you saying that the small farmers do not have access to uh, those facilities? I'm telling you, small, small, small farmers don't have, mostly don't have access to that uh, Uncle Borrowers uh, farming arrangement. That mm. is why I say the office farmers. In most cases, the office farmers mm. have usually do arrange with people who will uh, present themselves as farmers and mm. then they get these loans. When they get the loans, they in turn give it back to the office uh, farmers and they give they tip them with something when it is payment time they pay through the same process of those who collected the money in most cases that is what is uh, uh, happening i if, if i'm asked i can cite so many examples even though it won't be too okay for me to start mentioning names yeah but i can cite so many examples of situations uh like that we are the ones that are involved in this uh, farming situation our members are the ones that are also uh, finding this a lot of difficulties we are the same people that are pursuing different agencies trying to see how we can access uh, these loans for uh, for ourselves and for our members. Mm -hmm. So we know how difficult it is for a farmer, for a normal, uh, regular farmer to access this loan. Mm -hmm. But if you are a, an office farmer, it is easy because um, they arrange it, they work, uh, they work about it, they give out the loans. If you are need to arrange with them, you get the loan so easy, easily. So this is the challenges we are having. And then um, it is not too really, it's really not too good for the farming arrangement in Nigeria for things like this to continue to, to exist. If we truly want to uh, rescue this country from a uh, food crisis, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, there's very serious challenge on food security, as I speak to you. If, as at last year, you have a bag of corn for about 15,000, 14, 13, mm -hmm. by this time, uh, uh, this year, around the same time last year that we're having that price, now we're having it for about between 27 to 32,000 mm -hmm, naira. Mm -hmm. And if we're projecting that the rain did not come the way it's, it's, it's supposed to, to come, come. Mm -hmm. we'll be buying it for about 40, 45,000 naira at mm -hmm. the same time next year. Mm -hmm. uh, that will be catastrophic, like mm -hmm. you know. Lagos. So the government truly need to really give out this loan to people that truly require this loan. You don't just, um, although the government, in all its ramifications, and to be fair to the government, are at the center there. They wish that the farmers are the ones that get this money. They give out this money so that it will get to the ladder, to the lowest of the low. Mm. But unfortunately, the ones in the middle within the government cadre are the ones that are doing the abracadabra, <laughs> that the ones that are some people that are supposed, supposed to get the money mm -hmm. are truly not getting. Mm. So that was why I suggested earlier. Mm. If you are putting up structures like that, you don't just put up structure in the office arrangement. You first go back and do a reiki and do a survey at the lowest of the law of the farmers uh, in the village. Mm -hmm. Discuss with them, 
get their opinion on how best they think these monies will come. And then government should not only allow uh, the, 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 the government, uh, the agencies of government to handle this things alone. They should involve the farmers and also there should be a supervis supervision of the supervisors. <laughs> what I mean by supervision of the supervisors mm -hmm. is that people that are handling this things should have people that should be supervising and monitoring the activities. Even those ones that are supervising and monitoring the activities of the people in government mm -hmm. should also have another set of supervisors that will also be supervising and monitoring their own activities. Mm. Because this is Nigeria. There's always a way of, uh, you know, if you try to understand now, once you understand, then we both can understand. And then understandably, we'll move on and then I forget about that the, the real ones that needed to understand will not understand. Okay, let's take calls. Let's take calls. 0700-993-993-993-01465-7190. You have one minute, 30 seconds to uh, make your point. So I advise you just go straight to the point, all right? Um, do you have a business in the food value chain? Um, how has insecurity and other issues affected your operation? Have your cost prices gone up? What have you had to do to adjust? Benjamin is on the line. Hi, Benjamin. Good to have you on the show today. Hey. Hello, Benjamin. Yes. Yes. Hey. You're talking to Sandra now. Yes. Uh, I'm from Nigeria, but uh, I'm from Benue State. Okay. Yes. I want to tell you that I'm mostly a farmer. Okay. And my, yes, my father was a farmer also. Okay. But I want to tell you that the leaf fat, the scarcity of farm products in our state, I will, I will say that particularly oh, in Nigeria, the number one fact is Flanny Hesman. In Benue State, we don't have anything to do now. When you when you are funny, before you know, you see that Flanny will come at your back. Before you know, mm. they have kicked you off. Mm. You don't have anything to do. If you go to some area in Benue State, Places like Logo and uh, and uh, Uko, if you go there, there's no farmer there because some people fly people, uh, funny people will shoot them. They leave their place over six years now. They mm -hmm. can even go. They cannot. They cannot go there. Mm -hmm. Funny people will shoot them. So there's no. There's no way that they, they, they can farm. If you go there, you see how people are uh, some. Some, some marry and they get children. There's no way for them to, to eat. So what are they, they doing eat. now? How are they surviving? They are just being like that. I don't know how they are, how they are surviving. But the, problem, the, the problem we have in Benue State is full of engagement. It's quite sad. 99.3. Hello. Hello. Thanks for calling. Hello. Good evening, Sandra. Good evening. Welcome. What's your name? My name is Bumi. I'm in transit. Bumi, welcome to the show. Go ahead. Yeah. My, I just want to give like a sort of information. Okay. My husband uh, manages a, uh, one farm around the uh, in Lagos. Okay, let me say it's Ogun. Okay. It's, uh, after Owo Day, there are some farm uh, areas there. After Owo Day, that's after Mowe, Owo Day, or Fada, that side. Okay. Uh, okay. So about two weeks ago, mm. he told that some gunmen came around there and attacked one one of the farms there, not his own. Okay. So when he came back, he now said that it's like the, the, the guy's farm is, is the biggest around there and that maybe they trace him is a former naval officer and all that. Ooh, okay. But just last week, it happened again. Ah. They attacked one of the farm again and abducted one person. Oh, no. And this week, it happened again. Ah. And when they are saying that these things are happening up north, mm. you know, it, it, it sounds like just by moonlight. Mm. It's not that you don't believe them, but, you know, you are not, it hasn't come close. You're not experiencing it, so. Exactly. Mm, mm. But this particular one, it's so hard for me. It, it's around us already, honestly. Mm. Because all of them away is, is, you can call it a second Lagos or whatever people call it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just close by. I, I I hear I hear what you're saying. It is quite the thing. Um, I I have to ask. Uh, you know, staying on this insecurity thing because we've heard the first caller say farmers are not going back to the farm in Benue. Uh, we have this happening in Ogun, almost Lagos. We have just four minutes. <laughs> I don't know where the time goes, but um, uh, I have to say very quickly, Doctor Awal, 
Um, which crops are not being planted right now because farmers um, cannot go to their fields? How soon are we going to start seeing shortages because there's no harvest? Very quickly. Well, uh, very quickly, like I speak to you now, uh, you will have uh, uh, like yams, like potatoes, like Irish potatoes, uh, tomatoes, uh, pepper. All these ones right now, as I speak to you, are not being planted because there's no there's no rain for them to 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 to, to germinate and then uh, for you to be able to, to to get the production. Okay. Also, even the corn itself, mm. though it has been planted, but it is dying off because there is no rain. Mm. So, as I speak to you, we are almost in food crisis stage one. Mm. Before we get to the second stage, we hope. Uh, if by the special grace of God, by the mid of this month, we have sufficient rainfall, mm. then there will be a replanting of all this uh, farm produce. And then if the rain sustains, then you can have uh, half of what you are expected to have uh, on every uh, farming season, mm. which at least would have uh, pushing the effect of uh, the high price, but it will not reduce it to the level that um, people will be celebrating. Mm. But at least it will push in the effect. But as I speak to you now, all these ones that I've just mentioned, mentioned. are in price and mm. they are drying up. Okay. Now a basket of tomatoes, even in Kaduna, mm -hmm. where you have uh, sufficient and cano, a basket of tomatoes goes for about between seventeen to 20,000 naira. And that you know what it means. Mm. Before, what did it used to cost? It is even 26,000 naira right now. Ooh. Before, it's like 1,000, 1,005. When it is too expensive, it's 3,000. Oh, I speak to you now, a basket of tomatoes is 26,000 naira in Kaduna. Oh, okay. And Lanre, we've got uh, just one minute. So I have to ask the question I was asking earlier on, but we didn't have you on the call at that time. How do the farmers you provide extension services for go about finding their customers? How much assistance do food producers need with that? So uh, for me, I think um, access to market is, is very, very important because when you produce, I don't have a market for it. Uh, it's more like I'm working in vain. Hmm. And then market is the huge problem, especially for farmers, because um, their product, uh, their profit is marginally. Uh, and then if you don't have a um, good market, um, the cycle of poverty continues. All right. So um, for me, for people that are provide private extension service too, mm -hmm. is to give them opportunity to have access to markets. Mm -hmm. Imagine buying a, a tuba of yam in Benue at one, uh, 200 naira mm -hmm. and selling it in Lagos at 1,005. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a loss to the farmer. And so what I've, been, what I've been doing so far is to aggregate these farmers and be able to, you know, um, ascertain their level of production mm -hmm. and then connect them to um, an off taker mm -hmm. that will buy at better price mm -hmm. and also give them opportunity to export their produce mm -hmm. um, while maintaining quality of um, of their farm produce. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, what I'm doing so far is to, you know, help them to, you know, have access to better market rather than the village market where I, when, when you have uh, more people, more of the product in the market, mm -hmm. um, the price crashes down and which, um, you know, is, um, is not good for investment. Landra Kintobi is the CEO of Lance Farms. He is an agricultural extension expert and also an agro consultant. Uh, Dr. Abdullahi Awal Aliyu is no, we're out of time. We're, we're out of time completely. We don't, you need, you need this information. <laughs> we, I'll bring you back for that information. Oh, okay. <laughs> He is uh, in charge of uh, the Northern uh, Consensus Movement. Lagos, we need to take a break. We'll be right back. Oh, no. <laughs> you start your day like this. Everything is going well. 99.3 Nigeria Info. We are more than just radio. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at Nigeria Info FM. Check us out on Facebook at Nigeria Info 99.3. Follow us on Twitter at Nigeria Info FM and on Instagram at Nigeria Info FM Lagos for live updates as it happens. 99.3 Nigeria Info.